Real Change There are countless small deeds by numberless unseen people that have led to innumerable changes in the way society functions. On the surface, these changes appear life-enhancing, and the change-makers look like heroes. This is the way humanity views real change for the most part, that is, change that matters in the long run to lift the world and make it a better place. This is the way consciousness functions when it's dominated by the mind. The mechanism most people would agree defines and controls who they are. But the question to ask is this. Does the experience of living in the world reflect real freedom, real peace, real joy, and does love flow through this experience as a natural outcome, as a natural foundation? If answered truthfully, an immediate no must ensue. Why is this? The answer is not simple to this entity called the mind. It's very complex and has never been answered to its satisfaction, nor can it be because to do so would expose the mind as the perpetrator of all chaos, confusion, deceit, duplicity, and deception. No one would be more surprised by this revelation than the mind itself. Call it the collective consciousness of humanity at this present moment. The mind functions as if it is many, not one. Despite the evidence of herd reactions to beliefs of all kinds, and yet it is these reactions, always painful to some degree or the result of pain that has temporarily ended, such as the end of a war, that has led humanity to the break of the insanity, or shall I say going out of one's mind, that is now reached. Going out of your mind is exactly where we need to be as a collective consciousness in order for real change to occur. In truth, it is not really change that occurs, but the revelation of truth that occurs when the mind has been removed, or more correctly, subjugated. Order that is invisible in the chaos of separation appears spontaneously when the mind is removed from the throne of power it usurped so long ago. Some few people, percentage-wise, have attained this intentionally over many thousands of years, but now it's being thrust upon humanity by default because the breaking point has been reached and exceeded. The evidence of the loss of the mind or insanity is everywhere one looks in the world today, and it's evident instantly thanks to the technology we've developed, which further exacerbates the doom of the mind's position as guide and leader of the life we experience. At first, there's a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness, as what once seemed to be in control, if not balanced, falls away, and anything can happen, and does. This is followed by resignation and eventually surrender to the unknown. When this occurs, and it's happening to more and more people every day now, a sliver of truth penetrates conscious awareness, and soon the usurper of control falls into the heart, the true self, the real and genuine guide and leader of life. If this is not resisted, and usually at first it is, this light expands rather quickly, and a whole new world is experienced that is founded on the truth of oneness. Oneness does not shoot itself in the foot. It always looks out for itself, and cannot wound in any way. What this leads to for each one who reaches this level of conscious awareness is real freedom, real peace, real joy, and life founded on real, unconditioned love. It is effortless. It just happens naturally, even while the rest of the world swirls in chaos around them. This is what is upon humanity now. It has always been inevitable and is now a reality in progress, and growing quickly everywhere. It is, as the Tale of Two Cities says, the best of times and the worst of times. And it's our time of conscious transformation into real change in all its glory and beauty.